these dual axial coolers look pretty neat and they are pretty effective when your cart is mounted flat but with such an unconventional approach to GPU air cooling comes a bit of a problem when vertically mounting. So today let's take a look at whether or not you can work around it. Welcome to Machines and More. The Founders Edition 30 series cards aren't the only cards sporting a partial flow through cooler design in the current generation, but it is the most prominent one that kind of started it all. Now it works like this. This first fan draws air into the cooler and directs it out the back of the card. And most of us know this as a blower design. And the only way out for this side is out the back and outside of your case. And so for that reason, that blower design is great for a small form factor case where you don't want to impact your CPU cooling and your board cooling. But this also works at a detriment to the car itself since this chamber is essentially closed off, right? And so it's insulating the cooler in its own hot air. So to mitigate this, NVIDIA's design uses a second fan. This is the one that has an open section and it pushes air through the heat fins, directs it away from the card and through this open section here, and also through the side here that's open. Now the blower end of the card isn't a big problem for SFF cases, but the flow through cooler absolutely is because it puts hot exhaust in a very atypical location. And this will impact air cooling unless you work around it by mounting your tower cool in a rear intake or using a top down cooler that's close to the side panel, which will give it the ability to draw in fresh air from outside. Even with a suboptimal setup in a typical case, your graphics card will still be able to cool well as long as it can take in cooler air and it's the CPU cooling that gets impacted. However, there is one setup that really isn't ideal for this design and that is in a sandwich style case. Your card can still draw cool air in because these side panels, at least uh, this particular case is vented uh, and the blower part of the cooler will still work fine, but in most sandwich style cases, your flow through section is up against your power supply, right? And so that's not good. Now in this Geek G1 SE that was recently reviewed on the channel, there's just a tiny amount of space between the back of the card and this uh, motherboard and PSU compartment. So that really hampers the cooling performance of the card. Now, if we take a look at the stock performance of the card in Heaven 4.0, it seems as if the thermals are okay, but the reality is that this is because the card boosted its fans to more than 70%. And both fans at 2500 plus RPM makes this anything but a quiet system. And it comes in at about 11 decibels over the noise floor. So keeping within the noise parameters from the stock behavior, I attempted to tweak the fan levels a bit to lower the, uh, the, the flow through front of side of the cooler while increasing the blower side of the GPU. Now it's not easy to increase it much because there's a large noise penalty the higher up you go over 70%. And you really do have to drop the other fan a lot in order to make noise room for it. Now at least what this test shows is that it's probably best to leave the fans alone and that the cooler appears to be optimized already when the fans are at the same RPM despite the obvious obstruction. Still though, this is much too loud for my taste and I did lower the fans to 50% and fired up Red Dead 2 since I did want to check combined system thermals with the next series of configuration changes. At 1440p, the GPU is fully utilized and at 50%, honestly, these thermals are okay, but nowhere near as good as in a different layout case such as in the NR200 or the Sliger S620, which both have a more typical airflow pattern. Now this G1 SE case was initially set up as balanced airflow with bottom intake and top exhaust. And this direction works in parallel with the power supplies fan, which exhausts out the top. Now the first thought I had was, can we change the power supply fan to face the GPU and use it, I mean, abuse it a little bit to help the flow through cooler exhaust? Now other than being a really mean thing to do to your power supply, it pretty much just does not work. CPU thermals were worse, as were the GPU thermals. That's what the data shows. 
So scratch that idea. What about flipping the bottom fan so that they exhaust too? This airflow configuration sometimes works in sandwich style cases because in theory, it can create a slight negative pressure, which would help draw air in through the side panels. And that would help both the GPU and the CPU out, right? And as it turns out, there is a little bit of a benefit here. Now it does appear to be a bit of a mixed bag at first, but about a degree better overall as the card hits equilibrium and a quick check over on the CPU. And I'd say the CPU thermals are about two to three degrees better as a whole. So even though the, there doesn't seem to be much one can do with the cart itself, the better fan configuration does appear to help the cart out a little bit. There is one last thing we can do, however, and I had already set up an undervolting profile, which maintained the core boost frequency of the RTX 3070 at 1935 megahertz, while dropping the voltage by 80 millivolts. Continuing the test for a bit past 15 minutes, I activated that undervolt profile in the MSI Afterburner. And does it work? Oh yeah, it totally works. Thermals drop from the steady state 78, 79 degrees and plummet to about 64, 65 degrees or so as things shake out. So <laughs> too good to be true? No, not really. I mean, it's not a free lunch per se. And the reality is I could overclock the car to say 2000 megahertz while maintaining the same voltage. But when you're undervolting, you're just choosing to settle for the common boost frequency instead of overclocking and set a, go at a lesser voltage. I do have a tutorial I'll link here. So free, feel free to take a look if you haven't done so before. As with overclocking, this is really dependent on the silicon lottery. So you might have a card that undervolts really well, or you might have a card that can't be undervolted at all. Now, unfortunately, the fan level adjustments and flipping that PSU did not work, but at least the case fan adjustments made this less of a fool's errand. And at least it's good to know what works and what doesn't work in an otherwise suboptimal layout. And yeah, undervolting is actually a pretty good bet with this case. Now done this way, these are actually pretty good thermals with this card and this style of case would tend to benefit disproportionately from it because it's already running more poorly in the stock configuration to begin with. So if you already have a card with a flow through style cooler, I wouldn't hesitate to try it out in a sandwich style case with the undervolt and the proper fan configuration. But at the same time, just know it's not really the best home you can give it. Certainly running this card with an undervolt in something like the NR200 would yield even better results than you saw. So I hope you found this helpful. If so, give a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll go ahead and leave some build components in the description down below for you to check out. And please support the channel if you can. So thanks for watching and take care.